Thank you to those of you who've been tuning in to take a look at these videos. I really, really appreciate each and every one of you. Happiest New Year to all of us. Let's jump into some more symbolism, truth, psychological profiling, and complementary gemstones of the Sabian degrees of astrology. Today we're on Capricorn Cancer 10. Without further ado, we're going to begin with Cancer 10 today. A large diamond in the first stages of the cutting process. Another way to say that, a rough diamond with a groove carved around it so that it may be worn on a cord. A violent hail storm. An artist making shadow boxes in which he is placing collages and various small objects. A tree of ripe fruit discovered by hungry birds. The stone here is raw diamond and both stones will be in the description if you'd like to take a closer look. So we're talking about a diamond in the rough. Strikingly beautiful, naturally on its own, but it needs some work. Some serious craftsmanship will be required. However, diamonds attract intelligence, power, harmony, manifestation, good luck, wisdom, enlightenment, good fortune. It improves our energy. So, interesting, raw diamond, the hailstorm. So, feeling safe and secure and loved and accepted in an environment to where you can let your hair down. You can let your whatever is repressed out. And in that type of emotional release, we're able to see more clearly. We can see what is bright and shiny within us and we can draw that out and we can shape it. So right now we have tremendous potential but we also have a lot of shadow and we have a lot that is hidden deep within us and we're meant to bring it out. The violent hailstorm. Ice is, is water but when it's in the form of hail it is now likened to an earth element so it drops to the ground and is it helps ground you by releasing emotion releasing an emotional weather storm as a child uh, i can tell you one thing that my stepfather did was every now and then my sister and i were some we there was a rivalry there <laughs> we didn't always get along we were we were each other's best friends and only friends many times but yeah it was the sister thing so every now and then we would get out these boxing gloves they were the blow up kind and we were allowed to sit in a circle every now and then and just punch the fool out of a pillow that like each of us would hold a pillow and just you know rock them and sock them I don't know what those are called, you know, if you remember those as a kid, let me know. But uh, yeah, that was back in the 70s when I was a kid. That is one way to release emotions. Another is to do it through art. Like if you have very little time for creativity, but you have a notebook where you give yourself a challenge and you say, okay, I'm giving myself 10 minutes and as an artist, what I used to do, one, one little exercise, is I would have a paper gridded off and it would have like 12 boxes in it. And I would just put art in each of those boxes and it didn't matter what it was. It just was a way to release, it was a way to kind of a warm up exercise, that's how I did it. But it's also an emotional release. It's, it's just letting something out. And it was always surprising what I would come up with. Sometimes it can be a theme where, you know, they're all versions of a landscape. Sometimes it's a face. It didn't matter what it was. I was always pleasantly surprised what came of that. That's another release. Another is through actual, you know, screaming. <laughs> you, you, you've got to get your emotions out in a safe way uh, without hurting anyone, without, you know, imposing your will on other people. It's healthy because once that is released, the great release allows you to think clearly. So we're meant to embrace that kind of activity on this particular degree to get to the diamond, 
to see how to take the, the first cut. That example I gave with the art can also be related to the artist with the shadow boxes. It could technically be someone who creates shadow boxes with found objects, but it could just as easily be somebody who pieces together scrap quilts or pieces together scrap crochet. It's using what you have, pulling things together. And the other, the other part of the equation here is that by seeing what we pull together, it tells us what's trapped within. And then that leads to the next step. So it's loving ourselves enough to understand that we matter. There is latent power. There is latent wisdom within all of us. But we have to know that, we have to appreciate our own value enough to nurture ourselves in the right way. So this is a degree where we must embrace self-nurturing in a big way. Sometimes it is screaming. <laughs> it is necessary for us to acknowledge our emotions and I think in our society we're often told to bottle them up that they're, they're not helpful. But that couldn't be further from the truth because when you bottle up your emotions long enough, eventually there will be a hailstorm. And it may be sorely needed, but it may end up with some terrible consequences. Like you hurt someone or you hurt yourself or you say something that you really regret and you can't take back. I mean, it can come out like that. So if you have regular ways of expressing yourself in a healthy way but like totally purge is what's being called for here that helps you stay healthy in your relationships and your physical state. Let's take a look at Capricorn 10. An albatross feeding from the hand of a sailor. Many strange and diverse objects are seen floating down a river. A man astride a horse is drinking in its energy and power. A bird sent by an angel to lead sailors out of dangerous waters. The print of a rabbit's foot in the soft mud of a garden. Chlorite is our stone here and it protects from psychic attacks. It helps us embrace change and clear away negative energy, which can include curses. It aids in healing and cleansing our auras and our meridians and our chakras. It helps heal emotional wounds. It teaches the value of oneness and being connected. Giving the message, of what would it be like to live in Xanadu? I mean, to me, that's what Xanadu is. Leave a comment. What is Xanadu to you? What would it be like if we could trust everyone we meet? If we could trust every animal that we meet? if we were trustworthy, that we wouldn't harm anything and so it wouldn't matter what we needed, we could walk into what we now might deem the most dangerous of places and we would know that we would not be harmed. Being fully accepted means fully accepting others. To be respectful and even of, of animals too. Here it's, it's an embracing of the animals. The man is stride a horse drinking in its energy and power. We all benefit from nature. Here it's asking us to adopt the idea and the mindset of giving back as we take, giving back as we take. And that way it sustains itself, so sustainable living. So we're being asked to look at animals and look at nature in a way that it's not just take, take, take. Farmers manage their their fields without doing so over the course of just a few years they can deplete it and then it will not yield what it needs to yield so it, what what this degree is saying is if you want to yield the the highest amount of happiness and joy and always have your needs fulfilled be trustworthy be fearless treat others like you can trust them go up to animals where you're not afraid of them because they can sense fear 
and then they feel they must fear you and then it turns into an issue. There can also be a total detachment from society both physically and emotionally. So someone who is a recluse prefers to be alone, to be with nature, and emotionally alone. The detachment teaches a lot of things. When I have studied a few geniuses in history, one of the common denominators that they have is that they have spent a lot of time alone or not gone to school in the usual way. Like for whatever reason, it's always different, but sometimes it's sickness where they couldn't, they couldn't attend school so they had to stay home by themselves and they went into nature and they learned who they were. They got to know themselves. So it's a fascinating thing to look into when you look at genius. And I'm not going to dive into it, but, but there is something to it. To be alone, to quiet your mind, to quiet yourself from the usual routine, work five days a week, you have children and you got to take them to their scheduled activities. Then if you're in church, then you're in church on Sunday, Saturday you go shopping. There's like no time to breathe. There's no time to get to know yourself at all. I mean, that's like a joke because that doesn't even include taking care of the house and anything else. So to come off of that type of a routine allows you to come undone. And that coming undone has to be done in a safe way in an environment where you feel you are protected and accepted no matter what comes out. It takes a while. You keep breaking through barriers, but what happens is you learn who you are and you tap into the subconscious and it starts talking. You have these conversations and for each person it's different, but when you embrace that and you learn about the universe, you learn about how things work and you see the entire world in a, a way that you could never ever ever do trying to do it in the nine to five hustle bustle with the kids, everything else. So for me it happened after my son was grown and everything in my world fell apart. <laughs> I mean literally <laughs> went away and I met someone who said come here you just need a place to be and you know I wonder what would have happened what my life would have been like had I not met my husband because he gave me that safe place to come and be <laughs> come undone I have come to know myself more and more each day. It just wouldn't have happened otherwise. It just would not have happened. The goal here is to become not necessarily the temple but a single column of strength because once we get to know ourselves we realize that we have so much power, so much wisdom, so much ability to tap into nature and connect to whatever it is we need that we stand strong and beautiful as a single column. That's where I'll leave you with is, you know, what would this world look like if we did not fear anything? That's what I have for you today. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Give me a like if you're enjoying this. Subscribe for more. Leave me a comment if these symbols are saying something different to you, if they speak to you strongly. I appreciate every single comment. Take care until next time.